What's up guys, Reddish Reviews here with you again. And today's video will be the first of its kind. We are going to be discussing all of the awesome military surplus firearms featured in the movie Beast starring Idris Elba. I just got through watching this movie and there was such a cool and varied array of military firearms on display in this film that I couldn't help myself but to sit in front of the camera and talk about it for a while. I've never really had this experience before where watching a piece of cinema has inspired me to make a YouTube video, but in this case, it has happened. Of course, the movie Beast stars Idris Elba, who's a fantastic actor, and it's essentially an animal survival movie, very much like Jaws, but with a lion as opposed to a shark. We're not reviewing the movie in this video though. We're reviewing the firearms. So let's get right into it. This is basically the opening clip of the movie and it lets you know right away there's gonna be a lot of guns featured in this movie. So right in front there, it looks like we have a gentleman wielding what appears to be an AK and then a lady with a firearm that is not quite distinguishable in this picture, but it could be an AK or SKS. And then a couple guys in the background there. In the next image though, we can get a closer look at what those other two rifles were. So this gentleman in the back of the image just above the lady is wielding a number one Mark III Lee Enfield. You can tell that by the nose cap. The firearm behind that one also appears to be an Enfield, but you can't really tell that much from this particular image. The lady in front's firearm is still a bit of a mystery, and it still looks like our fellow over here to the left is holding his AK at the ready. As we move into this next image though, we definitely get some clarification on what the lady's holding. That is 100% an SKS. Spoiler alert, in this movie, the SKS is very predominantly displayed. This is the first clean image of an SKS in the movie. We can tell that the bayonet has been removed. It has some kind of sling on it. And if you take a close look at the trigger area, you can tell where it has the SKS style flip safety. We also get a better look at what I originally thought was an AK, but now I'm starting to think it's something a little more obscure than that. And that actually appears to be a VZ-58. We can tell that by the three ridges in the middle of the receiver area. And also the VZ-58 has a very distinct gas block and front sight, both of which the rifle in this image do appear to have. So that is a very cool Czechoslovakian gun in the hands of a supposed African poacher. Now let's jump to a point in the movie where you can see that VZ-58 a little bit better. In this particular image on the bottom left-hand side, slung over this guy's shoulder, you can fairly clearly see that receiver cover that's very distinctive on the VZ-58. And as that image pulls out, you get a good look at the side folding stock of the VZ-58 and the contour of that pistol grip is also very distinctively VZ-58. Thought that was an interesting choice for the movie. You certainly expect to see AKs used in Africa, but the VZ-58 might not be the first firearm that comes to mind when you're thinking of poacher firearms in Africa. It does make sense though because it's my understanding that Czechoslovakia exported or surplused a good amount of firearms to Africa. Since we're talking about the VZ-58, I guess we will talk about the AK because it is also on display in this movie. This is a very interesting image of an AK that has all kinds of adornments. They have wrapped the stock up very heavily with all sorts of scarves and stuff. But if you take a close look in this image, you can definitely tell that the safety selector lever on this is an AK. The receiver cover is AK and the front handguard is distinctly AK. Let's move back over to the use of the SKS in this movie. There were a couple of them throughout the film, but this one was the example seen on screen most often. It is an SKS that has had a scope mounted on the receiver cover. I tried my best to figure out what kind of SKS this was. There was no very distinctive characteristics that led me to think that it was any particular kind of SKS. If I had to wager a guess though, I would say it's probably Chinese. Here's a good look at the front of the firearm. This is a different SKS than we saw the lady holding earlier, but the bayonet has also been removed from this one. Still has the cleaning rod and there has been an aftermarket hunting style sling installed on it. Just my personal opinion, but in a movie where you're fighting a lion, the bayonet might have came in handy. This image has a couple cool guns to look at. On the left hand side here, we can see this guy has a bolt action rifle shouldered. It has a straight bolt, but it's hard to make out exactly what that rifle is in this image. On the right hand side of the image, we have another rifle. On this particular firearm, the front end is very distinctly French. And that, my friends, is a Mass 36 rifle, which would have been your primary infantry arm of France during World War II. As we take it over to the next image, the Mass 36 is no longer in frame, but we can see that we have our scoped SKS in use. I believe this is the same rifle that Idris Elba ends up utilizing in the movie. And that other rifle looks a bit more clear. I can tell that it has a rounded front sight hood. And on the 
back end of the bolt just above his thumb, there is a round protrusion. So to me, it looks like that is a Mosin Nagant. It appears to be a carbine, so it's either a M38 or an M44 without the bayonet. But that's pretty cool that all in one image, you have an SKS, a Mosin, and a Mass 36. This image is quite dark, but it is a very nice silhouette of a Mosin carbine. I'm going to guess that's an M38. This guy's walking around with his finger on the trigger, which is a big no-no. But you can also tell that it has that rounded front sight hood, and it has the cleaning rod. In this clip, we get a really good front-on view of a number four Mark I Lee Enfield, which so happens to be the main battle implement of the British military in the Second World War. Behind the guy with the number four is a better look at that Mass 36. The Mass 36 has a very distinct forward canted bolt handle. We can make out the protruding front sight, the barrel, and the underbarrel bayonet, which is in the closed position. In the next frame here, you get an even better look at that Mass 36 on the right hand side of the screen. You can make out some pretty good details. And that number four infield, you can tell, is heavily wrapped with all kinds of cloth and has a very interesting rope-like sling. On the left-hand side of this image, it is a blackened shot of that Mass 36. And if we look close at that rear sight, you can tell the sight elevation is set way, way high on that. I don't think you're going to be hitting anything at close distances with your sight slider set that far forward. I just thought that was an interesting little tidbit that I noticed. And we have a pretty good look at the butt end of that same number four infield here with all of its mummy wrapping and that very intricate sling that's wrapped around this guy's shoulder. It's kind of twisted and woven. Looks to be some kind of cloth or leather. Very interesting choices on the adornments of these particular firearms. From what I've seen, that seems to be really authentic and the way things really look out there in the wild. So I say good on the filmmakers for really paying close attention to detail and adding in little things like that. We'll move it back over to Mosin guy here. So we can see this fellow with a partially shouldered firearm and his flashlight is shining straight on that circular front sight hood. In this image he has completely shouldered the firearm. You can make out the recoil lug in the middle of the stock just below the bolt handle. The fingers on his left hand are in the finger grooves featured on a Mosin carbine and you can just see that slanted magazine poking out. The very predominant wood grain on this rifle is leading me to think that it's a laminated stock and if it is a laminated stocked Mosin I suppose that would be a Russian Mosin. But to be honest, there's no way to tell just from looking at this picture. We had a couple good shots of that number four infield. I think we need to take a better look at that number one infield. So this picture is again a little bit dark, but on the front end of this rifle, we can tell that the wood runs all the way to the nose cap. You can see your little magazine poking out on the bottom, and you can make out the rectangular cocking piece just below this guy's nose and above his shoulder. Forward from that is our stripper clip bridge for reloading this rifle with stripper clips as in intended and used in World War I. This rifle also has a very makeshift sling that appears to be several different kinds of cloth and maybe some rope. And here is probably the best image of a number one in the entire movie. You can really tell the definition in the nose cap on this one and that nipple protruding just below the barrel that you would hang your bayonet on. In this clip, he has what appears to be a handgun stuffed in the front of his pants. And if we move over to this next image, we can get a really good shot of what kind of handgun that is after it's been drawn. That certainly looks like a 1911 to me and a really good looking one at that. Here's another clip of that same 1911. Just from glancing at it and the way that the grips look and the radius on the bottom of the grip, I'm gonna wager that that is a 1911A1. In the same image, we get a good picture of an AK in the bottom left-hand portion of the picture, but above that is a firearm that's actually a mystery to me. I was not able to pin down what that is. We'll get another look at that same handgun in this particular image. There's a little bit of light shining on the rear of the handgun here, so we do get a better look at it. Judging by the rear end of this handgun, the way that the hammer looks, the way that the back is a little bit rounded, the two most likely possibilities that I can come up with is that one, it is a Tokarev, especially with the way that the back end is a little bit rounded and the way that the rear sight and the hammer kind of come together. However, if this is a Tokarev, this guy is not going to be shooting anything right now because the Tokarev is single action only and it has to be cocked in order to fire. The hammer is currently in the down position in this image, so the firearm would not be able to fire. My other guess, if it is not a Tokarev, is that it is actually a Radom Viz 35, which is a Polish handgun 
that was put into service in World War II by the German military. It would be pretty cool if that's what it was, because that would just be a little oddball to run into in Africa. If you have any ideas of what that handgun may be, make sure you let them be known down in the comments. I'll be checking those out. See if you guys can identify anything that I couldn't. So the movie Beast has a plethora of super interesting and very different military firearms in it. Something that I was very surprised by and not expecting going into the movie. I had a lot of fun watching this movie, although it is no masterpiece of cinema and it's not going to win any Oscars or anything. It was a fun movie. And if you're a military surplus gun nut like myself, you'll enjoy seeing some of your favorite firearms on the big screen. I also give some props to the filmmakers for including this big variety of firearms because in reality, you would run into a lot of these types of guns in Africa. France had colonies in Africa, so there would be French firearms there. Of course, the British had their own influence, so you'll see British firearms in Africa. There's actually a lot of Czech firearms on the African continent. There was American surplus sent over there. China unloaded a ton of SKSs in Africa. So it does make sense to see this many different firearms in one movie taking place in Africa. And I thought that was pretty cool too. I know this video has been very different from anything I've done in the past. This was a spur of the moment idea. So if you guys enjoyed this content and you'd like to see more like this, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments so I will know to make more videos like this one. I think doing a video every now and then on guns for movies might be a fun thing to do. If you like seeing military military surplus firearm centric content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel to catch all of my future videos and take a look at the playlist on my channel for tons of cool firearms content. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. See you then. Peace.